get started now. Yep. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us uh, in the webinar. We will maybe just uh, check for uh, there are some more people uh, entering still in the webinar. So we will just wait for uh, for a few seconds, and then uh, we can start. Maybe do you hear us already? Uh, if someone can just uh, answer on the chat, if it's okay for everyone. Okay. Yeah. So we see this is fine. Okay, perfect. All right, okay. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Bram Powers. Um, I'm marketing manager at Universum. Um, actually, for those who don't know uh, Universum, we will uh, maybe just uh, really quickly uh, present. So we are a digital marketing agency. We're specialized in SEO, SEA analytics, and uh, digital strategy. We are around uh, 32 uh, digital uh, consultants, so uh, 32 colleagues. Um, we are fully um, certified for Google and for, uh, for Facebook, but also for other uh, platforms. And we are one of the 10 agencies in Belgium who is a Google partner uh, premier. Um, most of our customers are B2B customers. We also have quite some in, uh, in retail, actually. Um, here you see some of the customers we currently have, like uh, bigger ones for us are Media Markt, uh, AXA, Delvo, and so on. Um, I think then maybe now I can uh, pass the word to, um, to my colleague, Harold. Yeah. So hello, everyone. It's a real pleasure to, to be here today for this webinar and uh, to share with you our methodology and uh, how to make great remarketing strategies, great remarketing tactics that will definitely improve your uh, return on investment. So I'm quite sure about that. So before going through the, the presentation and uh, the slides, I really like it to start uh, a little quiz with you. It will take only two minutes. It's only five questions, but you will see uh, it contains quite interesting figures, interesting insights regarding remarketing and remarketing in Belgium, especially. So please, you can uh, click. You can go on kahoot.it on your device, on the computer, as you want, uh, and so you will be able to uh, log in with that code. So it's a uh, 1991439, okay? So by using this code, then you will need to add a username. So we'll wait uh, one minute or two minutes to be sure everyone is in the game. They are a great prize to win today also. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just waiting everyone enter into it. Actually, it's a small game to warm up. I mean, you will see there are some interesting insights already. And yes. uh, the price, maybe we can say it already. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a bottle of champagne. Maybe it will be the first one of the festivities coming up. Um, but we will send uh, to the winner uh, a nice uh, bottle of champagne. Uh, a Moët et Chandon, in fact. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. OK, 10 players already. A bit. We are waiting for the, the others, 11. Of course, if you don't want to play, it's not necessary, not mandatory. It's but, not mandatory. Uh, it's just nice, and it will only take like a couple of uh, of minutes. Yeah, it will take a, a very a couple of minutes. It's only five questions, but very interesting insights on remarketing. Okay, twelve players. We'll wait like maybe twenty seconds more. OK, like 10 seconds. No one else will enter the game. Yes, Elizabeth. OK, so maybe you will start, actually. Uh, so you can click on Start if you want. OK, so it's five questions. The two last questions will count for double points. Um, so first question. What percentage of Belgian users leaves a website without converting? Do you think it's 85 to 90 percent, 90 to 92 percent, 92 to 94 percent, or 95 to 99 percent? What percentage of Belgian users leave a website without converting? Five seconds more. Answer. 
And the good question is 95 to 99%. The real figures, it's around 96%, in fact, right? So it's huge. It means that only 4%, uh, like for 5 to 1% of people convert actually in Belgium, depending on the sector, of course. You can click on next. And currently, Lucy is uh, winning, following by Lauren. Next question. The average click rate on banners targeting remarketing audiences is how much higher than if you target broad audience? So people who never uh, went on your website, for instance. Okay, so the click rate is like the engagement. So people who click on your banners, if it's about a remarketing audience, how much is it higher than if you target broad audience? Five seconds. Good answer is seven times higher. Okay, so it means engagement rate is much, much, much higher, of course, when you are targeting remarketing audience than awareness campaigns, for instance. Okay. Lucy is still winning, followed by Aliso. Next question. What is the average percentage of conversions that comes from your returning visitors in Belgium? Do you see 40% of conversions comes from returning visitors? Do you see it's 50%, 60%, or 70%? You can, if you want to, you can give the answer in the chat, but uh, I don't <laughs> think it's a good idea. <laughs> it's up to you to decide. Okay, the good answer is 60%. Actually, in Belgium, it's the average is 60% of conversions comes from returning visitors. Okay. Next question. Alice now is winning, followed by Lauren. Okay, still two questions, but now I think it's about double points. Yeah, double points questions. 30% of online conversions requires how many sessions to convert? since the first interaction with your website. You think it's about two sessions before convert, three sessions on average, or four sessions, or five sessions? Still 10 seconds to answer. So 30% of online conversions require how many sessions to convert on average in Belgium? Good answer is four sessions, okay? So this is the average. For some sector, it's even higher. Some other, it's a bit lower, but usually it's at least two sessions, uh, and the average is four sessions, okay? Tom is now uh, winning, actually, uh, but still everything is possible because the last question is also uh, for, count for double points. And last question is, 30% of online conversions require how many days to convert? So same question as before, but it's not about sessions. It's about how many days it takes since the first interaction with your website. You think it's two days on average, four days, five days, or seven days? Be careful because it's the last question, so. We will see three seconds, two, one, that's finished. And the good answer is seven days, okay? Seven days, a week, in fact. And the winner is on the third place, Tom. Great job, Tom. Congratulations. Then Lauren, congratulations. And the winner for the prize today is Ophélie, congratulations, Ophélie. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, so, uh, Ophélie. Ophélie, we have, actually, we have, of course, uh, your email address. So I will get in contact with you to make sure uh, the bottle will come uh, straight to you. OK, nice. So let's go back now and start, really, uh, the presentation. Um, yeah. Slide show. Um, so just those figures. 
are quite important. It hence the importance to have some strong remarketing campaigns nowadays. Just to remember, 30% of conversions on average in Belgium required more than four sessions before convert. 30% required more than a week, seven days. And 60% of conversions comes from your returning visitors, okay? So it means that nowadays, people are even more and more connected. They are connected on their device and they are searching for your price that comparing with competitors, for instance, they are searching for reviews of your products and many more actions, but they are doing this much more than it was in the past, okay? And it means that now, if we really want to make people convert, we need also to invest and to have strong remarketing strategies. But that means that if you currently have some remarketing campaigns activated, you will have good results. In fact, not, okay? Why today every advertiser is doing that? Uh, remarketing or almost every advertiser, okay? And it's not because you are doing remarketing that you will have good results. Uh, actually, quite few of advertisers are using remarketing at its full potential. And is the objective of today is that we really want to share with you great tips to make your remarketing more profitable and improve your return on investment, okay? And we will cover four pillars. The first one is about audiences segmentation. The performance of your remarketing campaigns depends clearly on the way you have segmented the audience, okay? What we highly recommend is to start from your user's behavior, okay? And create several audience lists based on the behavior users did on your website. You should not remarket all your website users, for instance, because on average in Belgium, still that the bounce rate is around 60%, okay? It means that around 60% that arrive on your website will leave your website without interacting a second time with it. It means that if you currently have some remarketing campaigns targeting all your website users, for instance, you are spending around 60% of your budget on audience that will probably never convert, okay? So the idea is not to remarket all users, but create audience from specific, um, uh, based on the behavior use, uh, user did on your website and create some specific audience lists. For instance, you can create audience lists from your homepage viewers, but only people that, for instance, uh, with a session's duration higher than 15 seconds or that they visit more than one page on your website. So you will avoid uh, the bounce rate users, in fact. Then you can create other audience lists for people that uh, see specific product or specific content on your website. It can be a product page view, but it can be like a store locator, a blog content, for instance. Then you can create audience from people that add product to cart or micro converters, or people that downloaded a brochure, for instance, newsletter subscription, and of course, your website converters, okay? It can be people that did any purchase online. It can be people that fill in a contact form, for instance, okay? By creating this audience, you have the behavior of those people which come, go from the um, less performance to maybe the most performance one, okay? So it means you can also maybe afterwards adapt the budget uh, and the bids depending on the different users you are going to remarket, okay? But still, this is only the basis. And this is already what most of advertisers are doing today. And what I really want to share with you today is two other audiences you should also target. The first one is all people that did any interaction with your brand, but did not visit your website, okay? What does that mean? It means that you can target people, for instance, that watched entire of your videos, maybe on YouTube, on social media, for instance. It can be your followers. It can be any people that did any interaction with any post or organic post or even ads you did on the social media, 
like everyone who liked it, shared, comment, uh, they open the picture on any post you did on social media. It can be ads, but also organic posts as well. It can be anyone who visits your uh, Facebook page or Instagram page, for instance. It can be anyone who was interested by an event you organized, okay? All those people uh, make some consideration for your brand and they, don't, they did not visit your website. Maybe because they, they will want to stay into the Facebook or Instagram platform, for instance. And it makes sense to remarket those users, first of all, because they, they uh, had some consideration for you. This is one element. But also, and we will talk this at the end when we speak about, um, I will speak about the GDPR and stuff like that. By targeting those users, you do not need to have the consent of those users, okay? So it will not be impacted by the GDPR law, for instance, right? And then the next audience I really uh, recommend you to create is all your offline converters, okay? Try to collect data from users that maybe will convert offline, okay? If you organize an event, for instance, at Batibo, at the auto salon, try to get the email address of the people. Uh, if you uh, have stores, of course, try to get email address of people who buy in stores. So we, you will be able to use this database to target those people online. For your information regarding the retail industry nowadays in Belgium, still that in 2019, uh, this year, 90% of people still purchase in store, right? 90% in the retail industry. Only 10% did a purchase online, okay? What does that mean? That for a retailer, imagine you are able to capture all the email address of all the people who buy offline, your database will be nine times higher than your converters online, okay? Just to have an idea of the proportion, it's so huge and not that much used actually. I said before, you can, of course, adjust the budgets and also adjust the bidding uh, on those different audience uh, based on what they will um, give you in terms of return on investment, for instance. Second pillar is about cross device. This is something which is not new. Uh, people are searching more and more on mobile. OK, the mobile is growing quite fast. And actually, what is quite interesting to note is that 67% of the Belgian users uh, used their smartphone until an advanced stage of their final decisions to convert. But at the end, 80% of conversions still done via desktop. Okay, It means people start searching, considering products via mobile, but then they go on the desktop to make a conversion. OK, this is what happens here in Belgium. Um, the issue is that a lot of advertisers are looking at the final results and they see that the cost per conversion on device is higher than on, on, uh, on desktop. They see that the conversion rate on mobile is lower than on desktop. And so they decide to lower investment on device, for instance. But this is a wrong decision. In fact, it's maybe the opposite that you should do because it's thanks to those sessions that comes from mobile that people started considering your product. Of course, then when they decide to convert, a lot of them connect via desktop to convert, but it's thanks to mobile. So if you cut the investment on mobile, you will lower people that will start in considering your product and this will have a final impact as well on your total conversions, okay? So do not forget the aspect of cross device, it's quite important. This is first element I want to share with you. The second one regarding cross device is that Facebook and LinkedIn, for instance, or Instagram, are already cross device by default for remarketing because it's based on your account, okay? And usually you have the Facebook app or the LinkedIn app, uh, the Messenger and so on, which is installed on your, um, which is already set up and installed on your on your mobile, on your device, okay? 
and the same when you are connected uh, on your, the desktop. And it means that if you are going to visit a website, then you will definitely already be remarked if you are on your mobile or on the desktop, okay? But Google, it's not working on the same way. For Google remarketing, it's based on an ID. And the ID will be different if you are connected on a mobile, on a desktop, on a tablet, or even on a connected TV, which is now quite new, okay? The ID will differ. And it's so for Google, it's not cross device by default. Of course, it's possible to do cross device, but this means that you need to implement it within Google Analytics. Okay, so you need to implement cross device remarketing within Google Analytics. So this will um, also let you to have some custom report, cross device report, for instance, um, to see the impact of. Uh, people that connect via desktop then, mo then uh, mobile and so on, okay? So do not forget this element, it's quite important as well. Let's go to the third pillar, which is also very important, is about cross-channel. As you know, people nowadays, um, the customer journey can be quite long. There is a lot of touch point before people decide finally to convert. Okay, people, uh, they start in the morning, they go on Facebook, then maybe uh, a few hours later on LinkedIn, then they go on Google for searching for something, maybe watching then a video on YouTube and so on. Okay, the, there is a lot of touch points uh, on the customer journey. And so by activating remarketing campaigns, not just only on Facebook, not just only on Google, but on several channels, gives you much more chances to reach those people, also to reach them with maybe different formats, um, content maybe. And so it will give you much more chance to reach those people and make them come back to your website and convert, okay? This is already a first interesting aspect of cross-channel remarketing. But what I really would like to share with you today, it's the importance to use UTMs, okay? So UTMs are parameters that you add um, at the end of the, the landing page destination, okay? What we recommend is to use UTMs for each campaigns you create, for instance, within LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and so on. Why and why it is interesting? Because afterwards, you can create audiences based on those UTMs. And so what does that mean? I will give you a concrete example. Imagine you are a B2B company and you want to target CEO and owners of a small, medium enterprise in Belgium, okay? This targeting is available within LinkedIn, but it's not available within Facebook. It's not really available also within Instagram, within um, YouTube, of course, and uh, within uh, Google as well, okay? But what you can do is create a campaign within LinkedIn targeting CEO and owners. And all those CEO and owners that will arrive on your website, you can create an audience list of those people. And then you can remarket them on Facebook, on Google, on Gmail, whatever, okay? And you are sure that those guys are CEO and owners, okay? So it means that you can remarket them on other channels and adapt the content to this specific audience because you know they are CEO and they are owners of companies, okay? So by using UTMs and creating audiences based on these UTMs, it gives you the possibility to use full potential of audiences you can target on very specific um, channels, okay? And remark those people on other channels, even if the targeting is not available on those channels, okay? So this is a very good a solution that works quite well. Uh, also because, for instance, here in that case, uh, LinkedIn, it's a quite expensive platform, okay? So doing remarketing within LinkedIn, it's maybe not the most profitable, but it's profitable to target those people and then remarket them maybe on Facebook or on Google, for instance, or on YouTube. Good. Let's go to the fourth pillars, which is about 
custom um, message scenario. What we really recommend is to create uh, and customize, sorry, is to customize the message according to the user's behavior, okay? What people did on your website. Or you can also customize the message according maybe to the, the audience you have created, and so the UTMs also, okay? Just to start, a first figure, 0.03% is the probability of being struck by a lightning in your life. Quite low, right? Similar probability, according to Google, for a people to click on a random ad. What does that mean? It hands the importance to send the right message to the right person, okay? If you do not have a content which is customized, which is adapted to someone, he will definitely not click on your ad. Okay, people start clicking on your ads because of the content you share with them. So it hands the importance to launch the same message for every everyone from your remarketing audience. Okay, but try to adapt the content according to the user's behavior and adapt the, the goal of your message. I will give you some concrete examples. Let's go back to the audience we have created previously. Okay, for all people that did, did any interaction with the brand, but did, did not visit your website, as well as all the homepage viewers, for instance, you can remarket them with a specific message. And the main goal will be probably more like inspirational. Okay, for people that watch some specific product or content, try to adapt the content and here to be more like to generate consideration. People that add product to cart or micro conversions, the main idea is to make them come back and to convert. So here also the message should be different. And finally, for all the website converters or offline converters, here, those guys, those people already know your brand. They already buy something for your brand or they already convert. So the idea here is also to rem remarket them, but with another content. The main goal is to generate loyalty, retention, okay? To be, to have like a concrete example, uh, I take some, one of our clients, which is uh, Belle Rose. So they are active within the, the clothing industry in Belgium. And here you have a concrete example. For all the audiences that did any interaction with their brand, but they did not visit the website, the websites, or all the homepage viewers, okay, here the idea was, okay, discover Bellhose universe and visit the website. The content is more like inspirational oriented and it's also adapted according to persona. It means that the content is adapted, for instance, if it's a man or a woman, okay? Then for all people that watch some specific products or content on the website, the idea was to remarket them with specific products. And the main goal was, okay, remember those products and those items you like it. Let's go back to the website. And we have also, we are promoting some similar products than the ones they have uh, watched it on the website. Okay, it's like more dynamic remarketing here. For people that add product to cart, but they did not purchase the product, the idea was to remarket them with the product they added to cart and maybe with the promo code a few days later to make them come back, okay, and convert. Of course, you can remarket them on very specific platforms. So here you have example from Google, also YouTube, Gmail, for instance, okay? So remember, cross-channel, it's really important. And finally, for the current customers, can be online converters or offline converters as well, the idea was to promote uh, the new collection, for instance, or specific promotions, okay? You know those people already know your brand, so you can clearly promote new collections, for instance, okay? So this is a good way, maybe, uh, to uh, improve your user experience. So it will definitely also improve people, the, the way people will engage with your ads and you will see that it will also increase definitely 
the conversions okay user experience it's very very important uh, that's it for the the four pillars i hope they were quite uh, well, you learned something quite interesting from this uh, and just to finish I want to highlight some limitations. Actually, if they already, if you already have some questions, uh, yeah. don't hesitate. You can put them just in the chat or in the in the question uh, box, and then uh, after when the whole presentation is finished, then we can uh, answer uh, all your questions. Yeah, sure, definitely. Huh? I'm very happy to to answer if you have any question on this. Uh, but just to finish, because I think this is quite important topic as well. It's regarding limitation uh, for the the, the remarketing. Okay. You know that uh, nowadays remarketing is based on cookies. In fact, in cookies can be deleted at any time by users. And it means that um, if they deleted the cookies, they will be they will not be anymore in the, your audience list. So you will be not be uh, able to target those people. Then another issue is the increasing use of ad blocking software like ad block, for instance. And finally, uh, it's due to the introduction of the GDPR law. Now you need to have the consent of the users. Um, so before being added to your remarketing lists, okay? So of course, those elements are um, make remarketing even more complex than it was before, okay? It's sure that it has an impact. This is, um, there is no, uh, uh, it's, it's quite sure to, to this, okay? But what I want to share with you today, it's some tips and tricks that will help you um i mean fight again ad block software about gdpr the first element i want to share and to highlight is the importance to develop first party data okay so the way you will collect email address of people try to push and to increase the way you capture this data it can be uh, by promoting newsletter, it can be um, if you had a brochure, try to make people fill in a form to download the brochure. It can be if you organize offline events, as I said before, like at uh, Batibo, Auto Salon, or what else, try to capture email address of those people so you will be able to remarket them. Okay, this is a first element. Second element try to improve user experience on your website because it was proved that if you improve your user experience people are watching even more and more content on your websites and they will much more easily accept the cookies and also accept to share their personal data with you okay second aspect third element we already talked about it is about utms by using UTMs, you can definitely create remarketing campaigns, as I said previously, on all channels. And what is interesting is that ad blockers cannot block the ads on several channels. For instance, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Gmail, okay? On all those channels, ad blockers doesn't work, okay? So it gives you the possibility to target people even if, if they are using ad block. Uh, then another tip is about, as I also said it previously, to launch remarketing campaigns on people that did any interaction with your brand, but they did not visit your website, okay, as I explained it previously. Because for all those people, you do not need their consent, because they already give their consent uh, by, uh, when they, uh, by using uh, Facebook or uh, whatever, okay? So you can target all those people, even if uh, they arrive on your website finally, but did not accept um, the cookies. And finally, and the last one is that on Google, you can also create custom intent audience on people searching for your brand. Okay, what does that mean? You can create audience for everyone who is searching for the brand. So for instance, for Universum, we can create audience for anyone within Google that search for Universum. It doesn't matter if they click or not on any ad. Okay, so anyone who search for Universum, we can create an audience list. Why is this interesting? Because then you can remarket those people. And so you can reach people, for instance, 
even if they search for your brand, but finally they will not arrive on the website, maybe because they click on a competitor website finally, or because they were searching for um, reviews of your product. So still you can remarket those people. So this is one first interesting aspect. And the second one is that you can remarket all those people, even if they arrive on your website and they did not accept the cookies, okay? Because by using Google, by default, they accept from Google uh, to be added on specific audience. So you can create audience of people searching for your brand, and even if they arrived on your website, even if they did not accept the cookies, you can remarket them, okay? So this is also a great uh, solution and a great tip, I mean, to fight against uh, the, the introduction of uh, GDPR or ad blockers. Nice, I think that's it for the, uh, yeah, just so that's it, but just to conclude, uh, so remarketing, if it's well set up, uh, if you did the four pillar, usually can give you high return on investment. But that means that you need to start by creating uh, and to segment audiences based on their behavior, based on UTMs, if you want. Do not forget the importance of device, it's not because people are converting less on mobile than desktop, that mobile is not important. On the contrary, it's probably thanks to mobile that those people start considering your product. Cross-channel, okay? Remarket people on all the different channels, so it will definitely, you will have much more chance to reach those guys, and also you can use you and remarket those people on other channels. And then, uh, do not forget message customizations, message scenario. It will definitely improve user experience. So it means people will engage with the content, engage with your ads. You will drive more people on your website and they will be more able to convert at the end. Right? That's it for today. I hope you learn interesting uh, tips or tricks regarding remarketing. Feel free to ask any questions. I will be more than happy to answer them. I don't know if you already have some questions. We still, we still have some time left, so uh, don't hesitate to ask whatever yeah, question yeah, you have. Yeah, we have time. Um, we see there are, there's already <clears throat> one question. I don't know, maybe uh, Harold, you could take uh, this one already. Yeah, so just a quick question. Um, so you spoke about very specific audiences isn't here a risk that those audiences could be too small to be used? I am thinking about uh, search campaigns. Uh, so here, uh, do you, uh, is it about like audiences from, mm, mm, so remark, do you, do you, uh, uh, do you speak about here about the audiences from uh, custom intent maybe? Or okay, I didn't have the answer yet. Um, so, for all the the website remarketing audiences, usually they are not, they will not be too small. Okay, so for instance, people uh, based on the product views, content views, uh, micro conversions, and so on. Usually, the audience are not that much too small. Uh, what is True is that indeed, if you, for instance, uh, launch a very specific campaign with um, small budget and you are using UTM, so for instance, you launch a campaign on LinkedIn with a quite small budget, I don't know, 100 euros, and it will drive like, I don't know, 100 people on your website. Of course, if you create an audience list on those guys, you will get only uh, 100 people. So the audience will be quite low to remarket them on other uh, channels. Okay, so uh, I'm completely agree with that. Creating audiences based on UTMs, uh, it's quite powerful, but it needs, of course, to have uh, quite maybe consequent investment on your acquisition campaigns. Otherwise, it have maybe no sense. If it's about small budgets, then just uh, create audience from uh, the uh, based on users' behavior on your website, but maybe not on 
UTMs and other channels campaigns. Yes. I don't know if it's um, okay for you, Ophili, or if I didn't answer your question properly. Okay. Okay, apparently. Uh, which is a too small list? 100, 1000? Okay, this is a good question. Uh, usually, we recommend to have at least uh, to at least 1,000 because on some uh, channels, for instance, on on Google, if your audience list is uh, lower than 1,000, uh, your campaign will not start uh, running. Okay, it it will start running on Facebook, for instance. Facebook uh, needs at least it's around 50 people, but on um, Google it's around 1,000. Okay, so try to have at least uh, that amount of uh, of audiences. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, we don't see any more questions popping up. So I would like to thank you very much for uh, yeah, for joining us in the webinar. Um, you asked if you were getting the slides. Of course, you will get the slides, that's for sure. Right after this webinar, you will also receive an email where you can see the full replay of the, of the full uh, webinar, maybe to share with colleagues or, or, or friends or whatever. Don't hesitate to do that. And if you still have other questions, you can always come back uh, to me, to Harold, or just uh, write us an, uh, an email via our, uh, our website. So thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we hope to see you uh, yeah, next time. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye. Happy Christmas to everyone, Yeah. and enjoy the day. <laughs> Bye. Bye.